Okay. Hi, everyone. I don't know if we're quite live yet. Let me know if you can hear me, see me. Okay. Okay. Can everybody see me? Hi. Welcome. Welcome to um, another sketchy live. So I'm super excited to be drawing with you guys today. This is going to be a great warm up for 30 faces 30 days, which is going to start in January. So um, I see people are signing on. So I'm going to chit chat for a minute while everybody kind of finds the right link and gets started and I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, some of you may have taken classes with me before or drawn live with me before. My name is Tiffany Estevanzo. I am a medical illustrator and I live in Tennessee. And uh, so what I do for my job is I illustrate medical textbooks and patient education brochures and anything that has um, kind of a medical or anatomical component to it. So you can kind of see behind me my bookcase. Me, I'm gonna switch my camera real quick here before we start. There we go. Okay, there, okay. All right, there, there I am. Um, so yeah, so I'm a professional artist and I draw for a living. I just tend to draw more of the inside of the body than the out. So I love doing these portraits because it gives me a chance to kind of focus on people's features and kind of get back to um, my love of drawing and um, working in pencil, which is always super fun for me. So I keep I need to move this way. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me kind of check over here and see where everybody is from. Let's see. Okay, hi, Stenna from Denmark and Dublin, Ireland, Tara. Oh my gosh, San Diego, Maine. Um, you do not have to be an experienced sketcher um, to draw along with us. That's the whole point. That's the best thing about these 30 faces, 30 days, is they're really about um, just learning new skills and kind of getting in a daily drawing habit, which is, is so good for everyone from beginner to experienced artist to really kind of get um, in that habit of just picking up a pencil every day and drawing a little bit. So welcome to all the newbies out there and all you old pros out there. So, oh my gosh, we have someone from Hawaii. I hope you are doing well. I know we've got um, some volcanic action out there over there, so that's super exciting. I have an aunt that lives in Hawaii, so. Another Netherlands, hi, Jewel. And hi from Nova Scotia. I This is my favorite thing. I, I love seeing you all from everywhere. It's so fun for me. I feel like I have friends from all around the world, so um, this is super, super fun for me to see everybody from everywhere. Oregon, uh, yeah, we got some people getting up early. I love it. Jana, Kim, Olympia, Washington, um, Texas, Ohio, wonderful. Yeah, so I know some of you are probably in evening time, you've got a glass of wine and other people, you got your coffee going. So this is fun. We'll have the, the full range of people from everywhere. Palm Springs, great. So. Okay, well let's, um, I'm gonna continue. If you have any questions, you know, you can put it in the comments and I'm just gonna keep kind of glancing over there and, uh, you know, getting, seeing what y'all are saying and if there's anything I can talk about, I will. I'm gonna talk about 30 faces, 30 days and I, how I work and also some of the, you know, the highlights of the course. And then also we've got a, a really cool giveaway, so. But for now, I think I'll switch back to my other view here. Let's see. All right. There we go. All right. So today we are drawing um, E.W. Paris. And this is, um, he's a fabulous muse. I've drawn him before in a 30 Faces, 30 Days course. Um, he's got a fantastic face and this expression I love. Love the expression. So. Um, I chose this, you know, specifically so we could kind of do, do some of this fun stuff with his eyebrow and, um, so that's going to be fun. 
it is not a straight on view so it's going to be you know we're going to have some little challenges to kind of get through in terms of proportion and stuff but it should it should be fun all right so um tool wise i've got a couple of my lead holders here um i like these i love these because they can get a really really sharp point so they're great for little details so i've got those i've got um a couple of black wing pencils, which I love as well. Um, really soft and, and create a really nice dark color. So I'll probably primarily work in those today just so it shows up dark enough that you can see it on screen. And then I've got just my regular Faber Castell, my range of everything. And a couple of racers. And uh, my pencil sharpeners over here. So nothing fancy. You can use whatever you've got, whatever pencils you have. Um, the best part of today's drawing, though, is I'm using um, my favorite sketchbook, which is the Moleskin sketchbook. And you all have a chance to win one of these when you sign up for the course. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But they are a fabulous sketchbook, um, really soft, and the paper just has the perfect amount of tooth and just this light kind of off-white color so absolutely love working with my moleskin sketchbooks so let's get to drawing um here for a little bit and i'll get back to chatting some more i've just kind of laid out my drawing just a little bit here um i did that so i don't get so distracted talking that uh it grows off the page so, but let me just go over it and I'll show you how I start all of my drawings. So, I always start by thinking of the head as, let's switch a different pencil. I always think about the skull first when I'm a drawing. So, I always start with the round part of the head. So, I always just start with a big loose circle. And then I drop my midline down. And then I kind of start to think about chopping off the sides, like as if you had a sphere and you smash the side a little bit. Those of you um, who are a little more familiar will know this is kind of like the, the Loomis method. Um, I'm just a little lazy, so I don't go through all the steps. I kind of, <laughs> I kind of take the parts of it I like that relate to me. So I drop my midline down, and then I just kind of work on the jaw. And I'm just looking, I have, I've got the photo up on the screen here for you all because it's a little bit clearer than my copy, but you can see I just have a regular kind of printout on a piece of paper. And the way, the reason I work like this is because it's, I like to get it close and I like to kind of work on a one-to-one -one ratio so it kind of keeps me under control if I can look and see that's, that's not the right level. I've made that too big. So um, I'll be kind of moving this in and out of frame, but um, that's the size I'm working at here, Sporia. So, um, and the next thing I do is I try to look and locate where the eyebrows are. So again, if I bring my copy over here closer, I can just kind of give myself an indication of that and then the level of the nose. Mouth is a little hard here because he's got a fabulous beard so I'm just going to give myself a little indication there. And one of the things I like to talk about um, in my lessons is you, you should draw what feels right to you. So if you have a method that works for you, that's, you know, that's what you do. In 30 faces, 30 days, you're going to have 10 different teachers, and we're all going to draw a little bit differently. So um, you take what tips apply to you and, and seem helpful to you, and then, and then you make it, you do you. You make it fit what feels right for you. And there's no 
no wrong way to draw at all. So let me see a couple more people here. Okay, Glacier National Park, that's awesome. North of England, Kansas, south of France, Brazil, awesome. Love it. Okay, anyway, I see some people have already signed up for the course. I love that. Malta, Miami, awesome. So I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, okay, so now that I've got the, you know, just kind of my basic rough shape of the head and I can kind of double check it and make sure it's about the right size I want. Then I'm going to go in and start working on some of the features. Um, I'm going to try to get through as much of the drawing as I can. I get distracted when I talk and <laughs> talk and draw, but so his eyebrow. So we have a lot more forehead than than we do necessarily. Um, if you're drawing somebody who's just perfectly, where's the camera, per looking straight ahead, right? When you tilt your head down. So I try to just keep things like that in mind as I'm drawing. I'm just going to block out the eyebrow right now. I'm not uh, going to add any details yet. And I've got this kind of... Um, furrow that I'm just going to indicate because that's a major part of his expression. Switch over here, start working on our other eyebrow. And when I start drawing, I try to start by holding the pencil back farther. Um, that helps me be a little bit looser. Um, kind of like you start by working with your shoulder and then when you get a little bit tighter, you might be working more with your elbow and then you work up to your wrist and then at the end you're working by just, you know, those fine little points with your fingers. So um, I try to start loose and get tighter as I go on. So I'd love to know how many of you are um, have done 30 Faces 30 Days with us before or how many of you are just considering it for the first time or um, if you have any questions that I can answer for you about it. Um, I've been fortunate to have been involved in quite a few of them now and they're always super fun. Um, super rewarding and just a good challenge and they're very no pressure some days we just can't quite get it done so you just do it the next day or you do it when you can and um, you have lifetime access so you just you can do it anytime but it's really enjoyable to draw along with other people drawing the same face and see all the different interpretations Okay, so I'm just kind of trying to block in um, now the the exterior shape of his face. And I actually think I've probably made it a little thin, so I'll probably adjust that at some point, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Um, and I'm gonna go down here and just kind of give myself an indication of a nose. I usually think of the tip of the nose like a just kind of a little ball to give myself shape to get started and then carve it out. Um, the edge of his nose here along here is pretty light. You can't see quite as definite um, of the edge as, so 
So I'm just going to kind of go light there. All right. Um, so somebody's asked if I'm using the Loomis method. Yeah, it, it is kind of the Loomis method, but um, I don't necessarily um, uh, do all of the planes that, that he instructed, you know, kind of. So I, um, I call it my lazy Loomis. So I, I, <laughs> I, I kind of do part of it because I, I do think that the, the most important thing that that taught that he was um, the the round sphere shape of the skull, but that um, it is kind of smashed and flattened on the sides on your temples, and you can feel that on your own head, you know, if you feel the roundness and then the flatness near your temples. So, so that's my favorite part of the Loomis method. So I do subscribe to that, and I also do believe that um, I'll, many many humans, you know, have that kind of golden ratio of hairline to eyebrow, eyebrow to tip of nose, and tip of nose to chin. Um, so that's another kind of measurement I like to keep in mind. So um, I'm just going to block in a few of these shadows here now before I get into any details. And I'm just kind of looking at the, the roundness under his eye. And I'm going to give myself a kind of outline of the eye without doing the details yet. I just want to get that kind of basic shape in there. Um, and I, I don't always draw in the exact same manner. I like to, to try a lot of new things, so um, I, I think that's one of the reasons I enjoy 30 Faces is when another instructor is teaching and I see how they draw and how, you know, gorgeous it comes out, I think, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'll try that, give it a go. And sometimes it's, you know, almost an entirely new method of drawing or way of thinking about a drawing. And sometimes it's as simple as uh, trying, a, trying a new pencil. You know, um, last year somebody was raving about their, I don't know, what was it? 2H or, or 3H pencil or something. And I thought, I don't think I've ever used my, <laughs> I, you know. And it just got me motivated to just to try something a little, little bit different. So um, so I see people are talking about um, they've signed up for the 30 faces 30 days and uh, this is probably a good time to tell you that the promo right now is for $10 off. And I'm sure Sketchy, they probably already mentioned it in here with the coupon code, but this is um, a really good time to go for that. And you have till the end of the weekend or Sunday night, I think about midnight to get $10 off. And then you automatically then get entered to win the fabulous Moleskin sketchbook which you will love if you haven't tried it before, so. Okay, I'm gonna just kind of finish up adding, blocking out some of these areas of shadows. Um, okay, let me give you another 30 faces tip. I usually draw fairly small for um, for my 30 faces just to allow myself to have time to get through them. So today I'm drawing a little bit bigger, um, hopefully so you can see, but drawing small, small is one little tip that you can do to help you kind of get through your drawings faster. 
if you want to try to keep up with actually doing 30 in 30 days. And like I said before, if it takes you 45 days, that's no worry. You have lifetime access. The lessons are there and they're not going anywhere. Um, if you're drawing along, this is probably a good point to step back and look at your drawing from a distance um, and kind of see if it's falling into place the way you want it to. Some people I know uh, like to either photograph it with their phone or look at it in a mirror. Those are all great ways to kind of check yourself. I try not to get too caught up in creating a perfect likeness. I try to more get the, the gist or the emotion of the feeling, the drawing, the portrait. I think I laughed the last session. I, I guess I said in one of my lessons, um, it looks human. So if you, <laughs> if your drawing looks human, you're pretty much you're successful. And uh, one of the participants commented on that, and um, I don't remember saying it, but it sounds exactly like me. So I think that's great. I think that's good advice. Just you know, go for human, especially if you're if you're just starting out. Just you know, just give yourself some grace and don't be too worried about anything. Let's see, here we go. All right, someone's got signed up for four challenges. I love it. Four card, oh, great, tons. Ah, Diane says um, she's bought 30 Faces, 30 Days watercolor, but haven't done it yet. Me either. I am still going to do it. I will do it. I have not had a chance to do it yet, but I, I can't wait. So I cannot wait. Okay, so I'm going to switch to a slightly darker pencil and try to start getting in some, um, a little bit more details. Um, what do I want? I think. I'm going to go to a 3B and um, I'm going to start working. This to me is the most interesting. Let's get this ribbon out of the way. Okay. The most interesting area of the portrait is this eye. So that's going to be my kind of main focus and how his skin is moving there. So let's get in there. All right. Sharpen this a bit. Read some comments. All right. Give a little shout out to my girls who are upstairs watching. So they were gonna draw along, so hopefully they're doing okay up there. Say live, switch to your 4B, find your 4B, switch to your 4B. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the anatomy of the eye here. Um, I always envision the shape of the eyeball underneath and a lot of times I will actually kind of lightly shade that um, that sphere that circular globe in under the drawing and when you do you will realize that a lot of the shading um, of your eyelid just falls right along that right because that's what skin is it's just covering the shape beneath it so if we think about the eye as being that sphere then it's really kind of helpful 
to finding some of those shadows underneath it. in the depth. I have um, the reference photos. I, I like to have one printed out so that I can move it around, but I also like to have a digital version either on my phone or on my iPad so I can zoom in and see details. It's also really helpful when you're working from a photo to have that option of lightening the photo to see areas that are a little dark. So. I'm just kind of looking at the folds of his lid here. work on this little corner of the eye here. And I'm not worried, I might go too dark and then I'll just come back and dab it with the eraser and lighten an area up, so. Just thinking about shapes right now, primarily. This little glob in the corner of your eye is called the caruncle. I just, it's one of my favorite anatomy words. And then if we look, we can see the thickness of his eyelid there under the eye. So I'm just going to kind of give myself an indication of that. And that's where the shading changes. And then here in the corner, then of course it meets up with the upper lid and we can see a little bit of that. Now this is, you know, we're getting pretty detailed here. I'm just gonna shade that darker. So depending upon how you're drawing, if you're using a thick pencil and you're just being kind of gestural, you might not add all of those little details or you might get extra detailed like I am. Um, so as an illustrator, I tend to, to think about outlines first, shading later. So I do a lot of kind of basics getting it down and then I start to outline and then I come back and, and add my tone later. But if you are somebody who likes to work opposite that, and a lot of artists do, where you just put down the tone and you get your rough shapes and then you go back in details, then um, that's awesome. Go for it. So. His eyebrow here and these folds on his forehead are in that position because there's two separate muscles working against each other. So there's this frontal, frontalis muscle in the forehead there and that's contracting and pulling the outer edge of his eye, eyebrow up. And then there's a little muscle called the corrugator which connects to the the bone on your nose here and then the skin above your eyebrow. So that's contracting down and it's pulling this um, inner edge of his eyebrow down. So that's how he's getting that amazing expression without hardly trying. And then another way 
I draw is I do a lot of drop lines. So I just like to compare relationships between each other. So the corner of the eye to the edge of the nose, how, how do they fall in relation to each other? Things like that. All right, let me check in and see my messages here while you catch up. Is everybody doing okay? This is an interesting face. I hope you like drawing expressions like I do. Okay, Vivi French says she's up to day nine on the watercolor course and it's amazing. I bet it is. I've seen the drawings. I've seen everybody, what everybody's been doing from that course and it just looks awesome. So, um, so this 30 faces, 30 days will be pencil and pen. So some of the instructors will be working in, in pen, um, you know, everything from the, the big pins that you have in your junk drawer to, to nice pins or um, microns, that kind of thing. And then some of us will be working in pencil. So my lessons will be in pencil. And I like to do some fun and kind of unexpected things. So hopefully you'll have fun in those lessons. Again, I'm kind of throwing in those um, those wrinkles, those expression lines, I like to think of them as, just kind of lightly and lightly in spots, extra dark in other spots. <laughs> I'll come back and correct and erase. Go work on his other eye here. I chose this one also because we don't really have to draw a mouth, so we're we're able to kind of cheat on a third of the face. So hopefully that's helpful to y'all drawing along. And no hair, right? also helpful. So thank you to our fabulous muse today. So hopefully when y'all are done, um, I love seeing what everybody does. So please um, post your drawings and I think um, if you go back to the title, I think it shows you where to post the drawings, but you can always post them on, um, museum. Uh, if you find EW's reference, you can post it there and then he'll get to see him too, which I know he would love. He's said he'd be looking for them. And if you post them on Instagram and you tag me, I'll, I'll see them. And then of course, I post them over on Sketchy underneath um, the, the ad for this, then you should be, I should be able to find them there too. So I'll be looking for them is what I'm saying. Just going in here and adding some darkness to the nose. Kind of trying to <laughs> oddly move away from my drawings every once in a while. Another thing I recommend, um, especially if you're just starting out, if you're able to draw on a slight angle, it's, it's really helpful for um, distortion and proportion. 
So I'm looking down at my drawing right now at a 45 degree angle. Um, the camera is looking down on it, you know, straight on top, which is easier, but I'm getting a little bit of distortion from where I'm at. So a lot of times when you finish a drawing and you stand back and you look at it and something's quite off, that can be it. But if you're actually able to, you know, hold it at a different angle, um, that's always beneficial. Okay, I'm going to just indicate a little basic idea of beard here, and there's a little area of skin here that we can kind of see poking through. And then I think I'm going to start doing a bit more shading and tone and bringing this to life. Hopefully everybody's enjoying. This is a fabulous muse. We have a lot of really great muses over on museum. Um, boy, I've got so, so much respect for everybody who volunteers their photos to be used because it's just such an invaluable resource for us artists. Especially, um, you know, our older muses and stuff because it's so important to draw different types of faces and it, it takes courage to post a photo at any age, but um, I think when you're willing to post a close-up at 40 or 50 or 70, uh, Props to you, that's amazing and we love it. Very thankful. This is my favorite type of reference to find. I like the close-ups, I like um, head and neck. You can just see more details than some of the distant shots, but those are fun too when you're trying to draw action or Kind of a reference photo. A full body. I do a lot of um, full bodies for my job, so I think I like being able to to get up close and personal and see the character in people's faces. Okay, so I'm going to do a little double checking because my ear is getting out of whack here. I'm just not going to go for perfect, just going to go for human. <laughs> I see my daughters are paying attention. Liv has switched to her 4B. Thank you, Jane. My daughter asked before we started, she's asked me what all the pencils were for. She's nine. I have a nine-year-old and a 14-year-old. Um, and so I was kind of explaining to her the difference between H and B and all the numbers. And I think it's one of those things you kind of get so used to, you take for granted. So you, you gotta, you gotta learn those things somewhere, right? So I was explaining that the four B's were, or the H's were 
lighter and, and harder pencils and the B's were softer. And of course she found the, the HD and was like, what is this? But it's the perfect one. It's right in between. Sometimes people ask me um, for advice, you know, when they're just kind of starting off drawing. And uh, I always just say, just draw, draw something small every day, even if it's a gum wrapper, you know, even if it's um, a piece of uh, trash or your chapstick or something, just find something small and draw it every day. So if you're trying to learn portraits, then, you know, 30 faces, 30 days is, is just amazing because that's exactly what you're doing is you're just drawing every day. I see, I see we've got a poll going now. So who's, who's watching and who's drawing? That's, that's a great thing to ask because a lot of times I watch the 30 faces. Um, I, I put them on while I'm working and drawing a surgery or something. And I just listen um, to the artist in the background and glance over every once in a while. And then I actually do my drawing later when I have time, so I absorb everything that's happening, but I don't um, kind of put the pressure on myself to keep up or, um, so it's like killing two birds with one stone, it's nice. So yeah, don't feel like you have to draw at the same speed or um, draw at the exact same time. You can, you can watch and then draw along later. Okay. So, I think we're getting there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to um, my dark, the darkest pencil I'm gonna use today. So I'm gonna switch to this um, Blackwing. This is the Blackwing Matte. It is just a super lovely dark pencil. So if you're buying yourself a treat, um, I would look into that. Get yourself one of those. It's fun. It's um, I don't know if it's eight B dark, but it but it's nice and dark. So I'm gonna just kind of start shading a little bit in some of these areas. This is when the drawing starts to come together, right? When you start to add those darker details and pull out your highlights. Another way I like to draw, and I'm correcting myself as I go along now, so I'm seeing that I think my eyebrow had gotten out of control so I'm drawing it in a little bit dark lighter and I'll just come up here and erase them out. You'll definitely be drawing with uh, different instructors who have a, a very different approach to drawing than I do. That's what that's what's so neat about 30 faces 30 days because Everybody's a little bit different with the way they approach their drawings.
Okay. Go over here. My, <laughs> I, I have cats and my cat is snoring in the background. So if the, if the camera picks that up, that will be amazing. But it is not me. So for the record. <laughs> so th I just think this is the a really neat area of shading here. So I'm hopefully I don't get too lost in it, but. Okay, um, another favorite part of my drawing, I don't know, are you guys like this? Do you have like things you save to the end just because they're just so enjoyable? Um, is, is shading the actual white of the eye and adding that darkness? Oh my gosh, just love that part. It just makes it round and you can just feel it it's like that and I try to save some of my white highlights for the end and I get out my eraser and I just get so excited to do that All right. sometimes though and I talk about this in my lessons. Sometimes you gotta you gotta treat yourself. Sometimes you just can't you just can't wait to the end, you know? Sometimes you just gotta give yourself a little like art reward, right? You just gotta say, I'm gonna do that highlight because I'm working hard and I just need it to come together. And it does, it helps, it adds that three dimensionality and it starts to come together. So go ahead, add the highlight in early if you if you want. Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, if you all have a part of the drawing that you love like that, let let me know because that's that's mine. Shading the white of the eye. What else? Um, there's usually uh, this a gorgeous highlight on your nose from where the bone of your nose ends and the cartilage begins. So if you wiggle your nose, you can feel the part that's bone and the part that's cartilage. And there's this gorgeous little white highlight that falls on the cartilage usually. I love that. That makes me happy. Yeah, so Polly Two Bear. Some likes to save the eye for the end and it brings it to life. I know, right? It's like delayed you know, like delayed gratification. It's fun. Um, so I'm just kind of using really light pressure and just kind of building these darknesses up like that. Um just how I feel like it's just how I feel like drawing today I guess sometimes I just go in there really dark or and just am done with it and today I'm kind of in a building mode um, so I feel like you know the first 30 minutes of a drawing for me are, are warm-up it's like remembering remembering how to draw and then after that it's like oh yeah you know it just starts to feel more natural and then that's when I think you do your best stuff okay 
Okay, I'm just gonna kind of indicate the pupil here. And of course his eye needs to go a lot darker. And I'm not gonna worry about those white highlights in his eye because I've, um, I've got a little electric eraser, so I'm just gonna come back with that at the end. Some days I'm delicate enough to just kind of spare them and avoid them, and other days I'm just let the erect electric eraser earn its money. Dana says she kind of draws all over the place all the time. I, I bounce around a lot, too. Like, I, I like to bounce around a lot. And um, other, other instructors and other artists um, are, you know, have a style that just kind of starts at the top and moves down, or they just completely finish the eyes and move on. And um, I really enjoy watching them work, you know, because it's just such a different way than than how I work, but uh, yeah, even when I try to do it, I still bounce around. Another thing I tell people to do, which I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever does, but is talk to yourself while you're drawing. Sometimes when you talk to yourself, you kind of, um, work out what you're doing or what your thought process is and I once I when I started teaching these lessons because I would have to explain now I'm going to do this now I'm going to do this and and you know I never really thought about it I was like well why am I why am I doing that you know and um yeah it's kind of interesting you're it, I suppose you're making your right brain and your left brain work together and uh, it's, you learn a little bit about yourself, I think. Okay, I'm gonna try to fix this angle of this scowl here. Just doing a little checking here. love that so I'm gonna rework it a bit so another nice thing about sketchy the 30 faces 30 days is you get a lot of um, teacher interaction so your instructors when you post your um, finished drawings, which is optional, you don't have to, but if you do, um, your instructor, instructor will likely see it, and then if you have questions or, you know, would like feedback or, you can get that, so that's really nice, it's nice to be able to interact with each other in that way, and I know I really, really enjoy seeing everyone's work. So I look for it um, first on Sketchy and then um, for folks that, that might have Instagram, uh, you can tag me and I'll look for it there. And then also on Museum. And it's nice to see things on museum because you get to see that the muse and the reference photo right beside it. So, and then I think a lot of people say, "Why is, 
why is everybody drawing, you know, why is everybody drawing EW today? And so it's uh, encouraging for other people to draw along as well. So, all right, we've got an eye kind of developing there. I'm going to do, where is, let's see, let me go ahead and use my electric eraser and give myself that highlight. All right. See, it's so fun. So this was like um, $10 or something on Amazon. So it was one of my favorite purchases. All right, let me check and see how we're doing on time. Oh, I'm running out of time. I'm running out of time and I did one eye, people. All right, let me get over here and do a little bit more on this side. Um, I'll probably work on this, you know, maybe another half hour or so, but I'm not going to be upset if it's not finished because, you know, to me it was really all about the eyes. So, and the same with your 30 faces drawings, you know, you might just focus on one area. You might not finish one. You might spend three hours on one because you just love the muse so much. Does anybody have any extra questions I can answer or anything else I can talk about? Um, let me know in the comments. And I think they'll have my contact. So I'm... Um, uh, museum and uh, and sketchy you can find me it's tiff draws anatomy and then on instagram it's uh, slayball studios uh, slayball is my my maiden name so that's the name i associate with my uh, love of art so it's slayball studios you can find me there And also, I'm sure you can tag um, EW or, so he can see his gorgeous face. I drew him um, in a, a past 30 faces, 30 days, and he was in costume and he looked just like, just like Sean Connery, who I adored, so... We have a lot of great muses who like to do um, do costumes, and and that's so much fun to get to draw not just regular faces, but also something that's a little fun. So um, if you go over to Muse and look for like um, Rick, Rick N is fabulous. He's got thousands of great reference photos to draw from. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> Polly Two Bears, this is, do you ever use a smudger? So, um, I don't. I, I don't know. I just have a thing about him. And, and I talk about him in some of my lessons. And I don't, I don't know. I just don't. I do sometimes use, um, a paintbrush. And, and I will brush the, the graphite with the paintbrush. Um, Sometimes I use a rag and I'll create like a base, a graphite base to start with so that I can erase out. But I, man, I, I love folks that, that, um, that use them, the smudge sticks. I just, I don't know, maybe I had some kind of like traumatic art school experience with it, <laughs> but I don't, but, but by all means, I always tell people like, you know, in my lessons, boy, just whatever you want to do, do, you know, you don't necessarily have to use the same tools I'm using. Sometimes I get wild and I'm like, I'm going to 
I'm going to use color. And if you're not feeling color, then you don't have to use color. And, um, you know, sometimes I do all 30 faces. I try to do it exactly like the instructor or, um, do things and other thing times I'm, I go kind of rogue. So you just do what feels right to you is what I always say. All right, I do love drawing with the eraser though. So um, I tend to just make a mess with the graphite all on my own without even having to use the smudger with my hand. So I use these um, little mono zero erasers and then I can kind of come in and pull out that area to add that extra dimension. So I do that. I check the comments. Probably everyone's like, smudgers are the best. I know I'm, I should give them another try. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, so, okay. So, um, my approach to the beard when it's white. Okay. So that's, I will just do a little bit. So I do a couple different things. Sometimes I don't even draw the beard. Sometimes I just outline it. Um, I think because I'm an illustrator, sometimes I just like to leave things blank. Other times what I will do is I will draw a gray beard or a graphite beard. Kind of work on his mustache here. I'll, I'll leave areas that are extra um, saturated blank, but in areas where there might be a little salt and pepper, I'll just go ahead and draw in the beard as, as if it was gray. And then I'll just come back and erase out. And then in areas where like his lip is, I'll just go ahead and give some shading underneath. And then I'll take my eraser kind of stick and then I'll come out and I'll, I'll, I'll just draw with it like it's a white pencil. And then I'll just use this eraser to then become, to create the white hairs of the beard. And then you really just want to focus on not making all of those hairs go in the same direction, you know, unless he's got a very groomed, um, polished must mustache or beard. You just want to kind of vary the direction. And then I just kind of go over that. And because I have that darkness down, that's going to show through in spots underneath. So that's kind of how I would approach the beard. I don't know how great it's showing up on camera, but but then once it's up against areas of darkness, and some shading in there, then it will kind of um, show up as white better. Yeah, so this is probably how I'll finish off the beard. I'll leave it mostly white, but. I'll go in and add just a little bit more darkness in here and uh, on his nose to give it a little volume. And then uh, here underneath his cheek there, we need to add a little bit of kind of fill to that and a little shading up here. And then I'll probably leave the beard mostly blank. So, all right, well, I think we are about up on time. So um, let me flip through the questions and see if I missed anything. Yeah, it's very human. Lainey, I think you were the one that said that comment about the human. I think you're who I'm talking to. That made me laugh. That made me just die laughing. So um, I look forward to seeing everything y'all do. I hope you've had a great time drawing along here today. Please go um, consider signing up for 30 Faces 30 Days. Um, you do it right now so you can get your $10 off and, uh, and just give it a try. It's really fun drawing along with everybody. And you'll get entered to win that fabulous moleskin. They're, they are really great. I have a bunch. This is another size I have. And you can see, let's see. This is, yeah. So this is a past 30 faces, 30 days. So you can see it's just, you know, every different day, different style, different muse, different instructor. It's really wonderful. So please tag me. Um, look back through here. Tiff Draws Anatomy. Slayball Studios, I love to see your art. I love to comment on it. That's 
one of my favorite parts of um, being an instructor and being involved with this is just kind of getting to know you all and getting to see all the fabulous work you do. So I will see you in January, I hope. Okay. Until then.